Okay, welcome back. Um, we are in uh, Toothless and I are here to read to you, or he just may fall asleep. I just had to wake him up to, for his big acting uh, uh, part here. And we're, uh, we are in chapter 12, section 2, starting on page 366. <clears throat> the title of this section is Independence for Texas. Page 366, American Diary. Thomas Jefferson Pilgrim was an immigrant who heard about opportunities in Texas. In New Orleans, he bought a ticket to Texas and a new life. We were now on the Gulf. Soon all on board were seasick except the crew and me and many wished that they had never started. After landing at Matagorda Bay, the others went eastward to the to the Brusa to to can read here with the lighting to the Brazos. I am foot alone made my way north to San Felipe, about 60 miles distant, from the diary of Thomas J. Pilgrim. Page 367, A Clash of Cultures, Main Idea. People from the United States and Mexico settled Texas. History and you. If someone from a different culture offered you a large amount of land on the condition that you adopt his or her language and customs, would you take it? Read to find out how settlers in Texas re reacted to a similar situation. Conflict over Texas began in 1803 when the United States bought the Louisiana Territory from France. Americans claimed that the land in present-day Texas was part of the purchase. Spain protested. In the adams onis Treaty, the United States agreed to drop its claim to the region. Land grants. At some time, few people lived in Texas. Most residents, about 3,000, were Tejanos, or Mexicans who claimed Texas as their home. Native Americans, such as the Comanches, Apaches, and Kiowas, also lived in the area. Because the Spanish wanted to promote the growth of Texas, they offered vast tracts of land to people who agreed to bring families to settle there. The people who obtained these grants and recruited the settlers were called em empresarios. American Moses Austin, American Moses Austin received the first land grant in 1821. He died, however, before he could establish or set up his colony. Mexico won its independence from Spain in 1821. Austin's son, Stephen F. Austin, received permission from the new Mexican government to organize the colony. Austin recruited 300 American families to settle in Texas. Austin's success made him a leader among the American settlers. From 1823 to 1825, Mexico passed laws offering new settlers land at extremely low prices. In return, the colonists agreed to learn Spanish, become Mexican citizens, convert to Catholicism, the religion of Mexico, and obey the Mexican law. Mexican leaders hoped to attract settlers from all over, but most settlers came from the United States. Growing tension. By 1830, Americans in Texas far outnumbered Mexicans. Further, these American colonists had not adopted Mexican ways. In the meantime, the United States had twice offered to buy Texas from Mexico. Page 368. <clears throat> the Mexican government viewed the growing American influence in Texas with alarm. In 1830, the Mexican government issued a decree or official order that stopped all immigration from the United States. At the same time, the decree encouraged the immigration of Mexican and European families with generous land grants. Trade between Texas and the United States was discouraged by placing a tax on goods that were uh, imported from the United States. These new policies um, angered the Texans. The prosperity of many citizens depended on trade with the United States. Many had friends and relatives who had wanted to come to Texas. In addition, those colonists who held slaves were uneasy about the Mexican government's plan to end slavery attempt at reconciliation. Some of the American settlers called for independence. Others hoped to stay within Mexico, but on better terms. In 1833, General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana became president of Mexico. Stephen F. Austin traveled to Mexico City with the Texans' demands to remove or take away the ban on American settlers and to make Texas a separate state, a separate state of Mexico. Santa Ana agreed to the first request, but refused the second. Austin sent a letter back to Texas suggesting that plans for independence get underway. The Mexican government intercepted the letter and arrested Austin. 
While Austin was in jail, Santa Anna named himself dictator and overthrew Mexico's constitution of 1824. Without a constitution to protect their rights, Texans felt betrayed. Santa Ana placed Texas under greater central control. This loss of local power dismayed many people. Even Austin, find, uh, pardon me, even Austin, finally released from prison, now saw that dealing with Santa Ana was impossible. He concluded that war was unavoidable. Reading check. Explaining. What role did em empresarios play in colonization? Page 369. The struggle for independence. Main idea. Texas fought for their independence from Mexico. History and you. Did you know that Texas was once a nation? Read why Texas remained independent before it became a state. During 1835, unrest among Texas uh, Texans sometimes erupted in open conflict. Santa Ana sent an army into Texas to, put, to punish the rebels. In October, some Mexican troops tried to seize a cannon held by Texans uh, at the town of Gonzales. The Texans taunted the Mexicans. They put a white flag on the cannon bearing the words, come and take it. After a brief battle, the Texans drove back to the Mexican troops. Texans considered this to be the first fight of the Texan Revolution. The Texans called for volunteers. Many answered, including African Americans and Tejanos. In December 1835, the Texans freed San Antonio from a larger Mexican force. Despite these victories, problems arose. Various groups argued over who would lead and what actions to take. In early 1836, when Texans should have been preparing to face Santa Ana, plans had stalled. The Battle of the Alamo, next section, the Battle of the Alamo. Santa Ana marched north, furious at the loss of San Antonio. When his army reached San Antonio in late February 1836, it found a small Texan, for Texan force barricaded inside a nearby mission called the Alamo. Although the Texans had cannons, they lacked gunpowder. The Texans were at further disadvantage because they had only about 180 soldiers to take on Santa Ana's army of several thousand. The Texans had brave leaders, however, including Davy Crockett and a tough Texan named Jim Bowie. The commander, William B. Travis, who was under only under 20, pardon me, William B. Travis, who was only 26 years old, was determined to hold the position of the Alamo. Travis managed to send uh, messages through Mexican lines. Several messages appealed to the people of Texas and the United States for aid. For 12 long days, through several attacks, the defenders of the Alamo kept Santa Ana's army at bay with rifle fire. On March 6, 1836, Mexican cannon fire smashed the Alamo's walls. The Mexicans were too numerous to hold back. They entered the fortress, killing all the defenders, including Travis, Crockett, and Bowie. Only a few women and children and some servants survived to tell of the battle. The defenders had killed hundreds of Mexican soldiers, but more important, they had fought Texans, uh, some much needed, pardon me, they had bought Texans such uh, some much needed time. Texas declares its independence. During the siege at the Alamo, Texan leaders were meeting at Washington on the, on the Brazos, where they were writing a new constitution. There on March 12, 1836, four days before the fall of the Alamo, American settlers in Tejanos declared independence from Texas. They then established the Republic of Texas. Page 37B. The Texas Declaration stated that the government of Santa Ana had violated the Mexican Constitution. It noted that the Texans' protests against these violations were met with force. The Declaration proclaimed the following, primary source, quote, the people of Texas and solemn convention assembled, appealing to a candid world for the necessities of our condition, do hereby resolve and declare that our political connection with the Mexican nation has forever ended and that the people of Texas do now constitute a free, sovereign, and independent republic, close quote, the Declaration of Independence of Texas. With, Mexic with Mexican troops in Texas, it was not possible to hold an election to ratify the Constitution and vote for leaders. Texas leaders set up a temporary government. The government named Sam Houston as commander-in-chief of the Texas forces. Houston wanted to prevent the Mexicans from overrunning their forts. He ordered the troops at Goliad to abandon their position. As they retreated, however, they came face to face with Mexican troops. After a fierce fight, several hundred Texans surrendered. On Santa Ana's orders, the Texans were executed. This action outraged Texas, who called it 
the Goliad Massacre, the Battle of San Jacinto. Houston gathered, oh, this is page 371, the Battle of San Jacinto. Uh, Houston gathered an army of about 900 at, at San Jacinto, near the site of present-day Houston. Santa Ana was camped nearby with an army of more than 1,300. On April 21st, the Texans launched a surprise attack shouting, Remember the Alamo! Remember Goliad! They killed more than 600 soldiers and captain, captured about 700 more, including Santa Ana. On May 14, 1836, Santa Ana signed a treaty that recognized the independence of Texas. The Lone Star Republic. In September 1836, Texans elected Sam Houston as their president. Mirabu Lamar, who had fought at the Battle of San Jacinto, served as vice president. Houston sent a delegation to Washington, D.C., asking the United States to annex or take control of Texas. Andrew Jackson, however, refused the request. An addition of another slave state would upset the balance of slave and free states in Congress. For the moment, Texas would remain an independent country. The Road to Statehood After winning independence, Texas still had difficulties with Mexico, and it faced a mounting debt. Many Texans wanted to join the United States. Southerners favored Texas annexation, but Northerners opposed admitting another slave state to the Union. President Martin Van Buren did not want to inflame the slavery issue or risk war with Mexico. He put off the question of annexing Texas. John Tyler, who became president in 1841, supported Texas annexation. The Senate, however, was still divided over the slavery issue and failed to ratify the, uh, the annexation treaty. The situation changed with the 1844 presidential campaign. Manifest destiny was a popular idea of the time. The South wanted Texas. The North favored going all, uh, pardon me, the North favored gaining all of Oregon. Candidate James K. Polk supposed both act, supported both actions. After Polk won, Congress passed a resolution to annex Texas. In 1845, Texas joined the Union. Reading check. Identifying. What was the role of Sam Houston in Texas history? Section 2 Review, Vocabulary, uh, and for these, write a definition for each. Tejano, Espacetio, or pardon me, Empresario, Establish, Decree, Remove, Annex. Main Ideas, 2. Explaining, how did Stephen Austin try to resolve tensions with the Mexican government? 3. Specifying, why was the Battle of San Jacinto important? Okay. That's it for Chapter 12, Section 2, Coakley and Toothless Out.